And we're live. Welcome to your your onion podcast, and we have a special guest today. Her name is Carolyn Collins. Hello, Hello. Carolyn. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm excellent, thank you. <laughs> like with all our guests, we basically we meet you in the lift for the first time and we're going up to our floor which is the 16th floor so you've got to give us an elevator pitch for 15 seconds for 15 seconds so are about you ready? me <laughs> about you <laughs> what you do just if i met you for the first time oh okay so are we ready? oh yes we're ready yeah, it's good she, she uh, never th- th- thanks for the moment. advance on this so uh my name is carolyn collins uh i've been in doha for 18 months just over uh i came to join my sister uh and ho- help support her in her business which is roots hair and beauty salon uh oh. i have found it well let's i'm go on. sorry we are up now. Oh, oh there we go okay never there you go. Was it. that's as, as far as you know that i'm joined my sister <laughs> Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we can continue. Fine, but we're up fine. now. Okay, so I'm curious. Why did you? Why did you join your sister? Was she in trouble, or you know, did she need help? Well, she needed a new manager, and I've always been in hospitality all my life, uh, working for five-star hotel and restaurants, mainly in London. And uh, she needed a bit of support to get the uh, the business out there. So uh, we got a really strong relationship. We thought if it doesn't work and I don't enjoy the lifestyle, then I'll just go back to the UK. But it's been amazing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely amazing experience so far. And is she a younger sister or an older sister? Older sister. Oh, interesting. So you're the young young I'm the baby. Young Actually, there's three of us. Ah. Oh. One's in New York. Debbie's here and I've always been in the UK. Okay. Ah. And how? why did she come over? What was her? Well, she came here originally in 1982. What? Uh, yeah, and uh, and then she left for a little while, and then came back, and is uh, married to a lovely man called Hisham. Ah. So she's uh, a local. She's a local. Yeah. She's eighty-two. Yeah. No, so she came here at eighty-two, but then she yeah. went. Then she left. left uh, for and then when while, did she come back? And then came back around uh, ninety-two. Oh wow! It was still a long time. Yeah, yeah that is yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. So she's a local. Yeah. yeah. So she was really fed up of having to go back to the UK every time she wanted to get her hair styled, get her hair done. Mm. I know the feeling. She's had nightmares done like everybody <laughs> has. And um, when she did have a really good stylist, they'd always be working from home and she wanted to have a salon experience. She wanted to be able to have like a one-stop shop and do everything in the same place instead of going one, one place for hair and one for her facials, etc. So in around 2010, 11, she had this uh, dream to set up a, a hair and beauty salon. And eventually in 2015, Roots doors opened. So ah. had she had a history of... Uh, no, nothing, none. Nothing <laughs> in, uh, in beauty or hair at all. Wow. No. So what is her background? Her background, she's always been, um, she did a degree in law, but she's always been a, a PA uh, and worked for ExxonMobil, um, was her last job, and she's now happily retired. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. Oh, so she's not so with she's re- anymore? No, well, she's always been part of the business, but she she just doesn't run it. Uh, ah. She's she's too close to the business, she's too passionate about yeah. it for her to run it on a day-to-day basis. Mm. But she is the strength behind me every day that I work mm. and yeah she's cool. very very powerful. I mean Roots is Debbie I mean what she's created she hasn't just created a, a hairdressers she has created this amazing business that everyone doesn't see it as a company they see it. they're so the staff are so pers- it's so personal to all of us we're so mm. proud about the product and what she's sheer quality when you go into Roots it's like being home. Everyone says it's like home from home. It's mm. white floor. I mean, who would in their right mind have a white floor on a hairdresser's? But it so works. Everything is quality. And customer service and quality is, is our passion. And uh, our mission is to always make women look and feel amazing. And our vision has always been to be number one in Qatar. She's a good salesperson. She is the best. She's got me convinced. <laughs> well, <laughs> I haven't been there yet. Well, I'm going to book her an appointment this afternoon. No, but it was funny, wasn't it? Uh, when our podcast producer came in and she saw the Roots mugs. Yeah. Said, oh, 
Roots. I love Roots. I don't know how much you got paid by Carolyn. Yeah. Just, say it, just say this. No, but it's really cool. You know, but it worked, know. didn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> convinced you. Yeah, I could see through it. But, uh, I was like, wow. So, no, uh, but you're well known. So Big Sister convinced you to come over and then she thought, okay, I can retire now. Was well, that? it's never quite like that because we're always using her for lots of different things behind the scenes. And she's <laughs> very much part of Roots every day. So did she train in, um, I know you didn't, you said that she trained in law, etc. But before she set up the salon, did she do any? No, she's no, a businesswoman. She's that a, was yeah, it, when you've got, it's like it. every business, if you've got a vision and a passion, you'll make it happen, won't you? Mm-hmm. We have ex- experts. We have an amazing girl called Lauren, who's our manager. And we've just taken uh, on a consultant that we work very closely with from the UK called Tracy Devine Smith who is an international stylist. She is, she kind of just lives, we were talking about it today, she just so lives our vision, our, our, our ethos of everything that we're, all, we're about. It's amazing. And so having, she's just come, she's just left this morning. She's been with us for two days and she gives the energy and the support to the girls and kind of, you know, when you haven't got training anywhere here and really very interesting training here for the kind of level we're at in Qatar, you have to bring that in. Well, that's, that's, that was my next question. Where do you find the talent? To you know, what, work staff for the salon. Wise, yeah, staff staff wise. Wise. Well, you know, it, well, it takes. And a how do you while. convince them to come over here? And you know, well, in actual this is fact, the best place to... I'll be honest with you. Okay. We have people knocking on our doors now because when someone wants to come to Qatar, it's always usually word of mouth. Mm. You know, where's a good company to work for? Um, our girls have all been with us since we opened, and the only new ones are because we are expanding. Mm. So yeah. That so what, so cool. what kind of services do you offer? And is it just for females? At the moment, it is just for Jeez. females. Oh, our our next dream is men. to do for men as well. <sighs> but at the moment, we do all beauty. So from eyelash extensions, uh, facials, amazing you know, facials, spray tanning, manicures, pedicures. You know, you know, every kind of beauty treatment mm. you can imagine. Well, yes, exactly. Wow. Yeah, yeah, my wife always says that I need my nails sorted. <laughs> Yeah, she exactly. We do. Toenails. We have many men that want to come. I don't want to talk about your toenails. <laughs> no, bless you. Everyone needs a good pedicure every Absolutely. month. Absolutely, male or female. Yeah, totally, totally. Of course. And then we all talk. hair. We are color. We tend to do a lot of color correction here in Doha. We specialize oh. in blonde. Is that how you knew these guys <laughs> after your disasters? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh! I, I don't think I get story. any work off her for oh, two days after bless. she's had her hair done. It's just like, oh, I'm not going to go there again. <laughs> oh, come and find us. I do now. Have we'll you look not been to Rusin? You. No, it, I haven't. Oh, so this is. I'm going to try it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So, so, how many staff have you got? All together. Yeah. About eighteen. Wow. Nineteen. Wow. We're going to coming up to twenty soon. Yeah. And how do you market yourselves here in Qatar? Is it just word of mouth? Or? Yeah, so a lot of it's been through word of mouth, but um, our uh, social media has been really, really strong for us. Yeah. Um, but one of the biggest ways of showcasing ourselves was from our pamper evenings. So what we did is we opened our doors, did a little mini pam- pamper evenings, had a guest speaker, um, and we invited just a few women that maybe wanted to do some jewellery and, and fashion and chocolates and different things. And that has evolved into this amazing platform where we now support women in business. That wow. is so cool. Okay. We, we talked about that and I yeah. was like, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's huge. It's getting it's bigger amazing. and bigger. Where you've got ladies that are, obviously, generally most women are here to support their husbands and they mm. want to do something um, either from home or something, bring their business over. And it's supporting them and women meeting women. You know, it's like when you get women, I mean, the energy is phenomenal, but they all collab together, work together, support one another. And it it just ends up being, uh, we had one evening last night, we launched uh, Roots at Pearl last night. And we had over nearly 150 women there. Wow, that's um, a good turnout. So it yeah, was fantastic, it absolutely. And the, again, I'm, the, my phone's been going mad today. Yeah, but with, I saw yesterday, you know, 
all the the Instagram posts, like reposts yeah. from from yeah. your event, was amazing. Yeah. yeah, it has been, and I think just followers. We picked up over sixty followers just from that event last mm. night. Mm. Yeah, it's and when when you say guest speakers, what what are they talking about? Is well, it, it we just... didn't. Ha- well, we actually had the good, beautiful um, Crystal Tenori that actually did the um, did the kind of opening for us. But we've had people like the gorgeous Elizabeth Reese did our very first one, just kind of chat about women and confidence and you know what she does um and we've had um nahani brown that does is a coach wellness coach yeah, yeah. Uh, we have you know inspirational women we've had sondra um hope yeah, we've had sondra, her. yeah. she's you know just amazing listening story, to yeah. amazing woman with an amazing story uh who's touched many lives um, so we we are blessed to have been mm. you know working with many. We had our first fashion show with Pooja uh, in March. That was absolutely awesome. Uh, with Sandra, we did we support women with cancer, and we had our Giving Hope event. We got one coming up next month, which is called our Fashion Swap. So it's eco to kind of swap clothes, Very think good. about the That's environment. Really have you got your wardrobe? Oh, pff, I have so much uh, clothes. And That's then, amazing. Yeah, then through the women that we've met, we did a, a really lovely initiative called Giving Back. So we asked people to nominate that special woman that's always giving to other people. You know, it maybe isn't a bad place herself that just needs um, a bit of love and a bit of pampering. So we invite that person that gets nominated for a four-hour ultimate pampering session just to say thank you. And we we've started doing that now. It was every month, but we're kind of doing that every quarter now. Uh, and that's been really a... A great event. And from the very first lady we met, her name was Ilse. She works for a um, uh, disabled centre in Doha. She was always buying toys for the kids out mm. of her own money. She goes out of her way for other people, helps other people on her days off. So the girls then said, oh, why don't we ask all our mums if they've got toys? Everyone's got toys that they don't want. Absolutely. So we then did a giving toys initiative. And oh my gosh, we got bombarded in clothes and <laughs> toys. So we set, we support the uh, women's prison. We sent them over to Sri Lanka. Yeah, we, we've got that charity in Sri Lanka. Mm. So yeah, we send, we've been supporting lots of different initiatives too. Wow. That is so amazing. That's amazing. That's great. Mm. It's that's just great and that's true, just meeting different people, different yeah. women that inspire you mm. to, you know, do something else and mm. and uh, No, but it's always great to hear of a business that gives back mm-hmm. rather than just take take take. No, it, that's uh, massive to give back to the community, yeah, absolutely. definitely. Yeah. It means oh. a lot for us. That's kind that of ended up so being a little nice. bit more of our ethos now in the yeah. last uh, year or so. Yeah. Because that is what you do when you come to, you know, a saloon, you actually you s- talk so much with, with your your stylist when you're doing your stuff yeah and you got this special bond it's true you know so don't true. you feel that when you are <laughs> yeah but you go to your saloon and i have seen all the pictures no, I of know. your There's, cool things yeah but i don't think men are the same as women Probably when not. it comes to Maybe i mean not. our stylists i think are uh are, what do they call them their counselors exactly i mean er, they know everything about most of their clients mm. you know yeah, because we it's like therapy it you is. go there and you know my my totally is. my stylist know everything yeah. about me i'm when, not sure you're having the right therapy though when you come <laughs> out with your hair going all wrong <laughs> so all right let's um let's go back in time um well i'm curious how how easy was it setting up a salon here in Qatar? I think uh, for my sister, sister, it was not easy at all. No. They don't work for small businesses. It's crazy that they don't support uh, small businesses. We're treated the same as Carrefour, you know, Ikea, Marks and Spencers. There's no, whether it be a fine, whether it be wanting to put on an advert, we have to pay the same price. And it's mm. just, it, there's just lack of support, unfortunately. And you know that things change. They change all the time. You don't know when they change. And it depends who you talk to. So it's never easy. But, you know, in the same breath, we've come a long way. And it makes you... Um, very, very, I forget the word now. Um, my my sister has a lot of resilience. <laughs> oh yeah, no, absolutely, you need that. Um, and what? Um, how do you? What would you say is the difference between uh, your salon and uh, other salons here in 
cat on? Well, there are very, that's what we keep saying to our girls, there are a lot of very talented and some fantastic salons here in Qatar. So what does make us different? Absolutely. Well, for us, it's got to be the customer service. Yeah. From the moment that client walks in the doors, it's got to be a wow. And thankfully, my sister invested a lot of money, more than most people would in the, in the, um, in the salon itself, in the interior. Uh, but from there, it's got to be from that warm smile as soon as one come, uh, a client comes in and putting them on a journey, giving them, mm. take them, and we say to the girls, take them on your journey. Wow that client. You know, walk that extra mile. Uh, make them feel, make that person feel special. I mean, in life, if you can make someone feel special and do kindness for someone every day, it just, you know, makes somebody's day. And we have women that are cry because you you look at the before and after photos and Not you really. make that woman feel good in themselves it's such an amazing feel i say to the girls you've got magic in your hands mm-hmm. uh from what from whether you have your nails done we've got one girl that does facials i swear to you from the moment she touches you she only just has to lift your hair up and you feel automatically relaxed she's yeah. got a gift in her hands yeah. for sure um yeah all our girls are in, they've all got a real true gift and uh, that's our mission, is to um, take each client through our journey and make it really special. Superb. Mm. And how do you keep up with the, you know, the trends of fashion, hairstyles, and especially, you know, how, you know, because you have, you'll probably have so many different women coming from different yeah. types of communities. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. you know, how do you keep up with what might be trendy in one community yeah. might not. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, it, it works two ways because you've either the client knows what they want or okay. we need to give them advice and they're say, but it's very difficult because what uh, what we might think looks great on them doesn't mean that they're going to be comfortable no, exactly. with it. So you've got to deal with that. You've got to deal with their expectations because most of the time clients aren't even there. They've got a, 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 an expectation that is not feasible. So it's kind of letting them down very lightly or trying to come to compromise with them because sometimes we won't even touch somebody's hair if they've had just had it highly processed and had a mistake we've got to do it so that we are protecting the hair at the mm. same time not just you know doing what we what we think would look great mm. uh, oh, so that's great so you work that, oh, yeah, yeah so you will advise and totally uh, totally yeah. and trends you know the girls can see that online now we've got the internet you've always got the local you know the latest trends working with someone like tracy divine smith is another inspiration to see about different techniques and what to do and how to do it so yeah, no, the girls are, um, they're passionate. They, they they do it every evening, every day. They're workers, you know, mm. they, they live it. And the training, is that just by them going online or do you have people well, coming Well, yeah, and... we have uh, Tracy come in twice a year, but okay. we had another girl went to the UK. She had wanted to do some training with Sophia Hilton. So we paid for that for her. We say to the girls, if there's any training that you want when you go home, no matter where it is, even in a beauty, uh, sometimes our suppliers do put training on for beauty, then we'll take advantage of doing that. We're going to, going to uh, organise for HD Brows to come over from um, the UK uh, very soon um, because we've got one girl that does HD Brows, but we want all of the girls to be able to do it. So again, it's a big investment for us. Superb. Cool. And going further back, You know, you said you were in hospitality. Yeah. How did you get into that uh, line of business? So I've always loved cooking. I love, (laughs) as a child, I loved cooking. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I remember my mum saying to me, why don't you go and do a catering course? Because even if you don't like it, you'll always use it. And I thought, yeah, it's true, actually. And I went and did it and I loved it. Yeah. I loved, I, the cooking was that part, but I didn't like behind, being behind the scenes. I wanted to be on the front of the scenes. So I've always been front of house. So although my passion was always cooking, I think that my creativity was more on the front of house, not on the back. So I've always uh, um, run hotels and restaurants um, from front of house. Superb. And have you met any, uh, any you know, any stars? Oh, any of course. Famous? I've worked with them all. Yeah. Uh, Gordon Ramsay. Oh, I've love. worked oh, with the best Gordon in Ramsay, the. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a lovely man. So also uh, Chris Corbin and Jeremy King, who have run Caprice Holdings and the Woolsey. I worked at the Woolsey with them. Uh, the Woolsey was their first restaurant, all day restaurant. And having had a background in hotels and procedures and everything. I worked at the Dorchester. I did the opening uh, of the Dorchester in 1990. Um, uh, I then did the Lanesborough Hotel, uh, High Park Corner, did the opening of that hotel. It was like the new six-star hotel. Uh, I did the opening there and worked there for eight years. Wow. Um, Yeah, I've worked with um, uh, Chris Galvin, who's quite renowned, used to work with uh, Caprice Holdings as well. He's got his own uh, restaurants. 
doing very, very well. Yeah, I've, I've been very blessed to work with some of the best in the business. So how was it like coming from London to Qatar? Exactly. I have to be very honest, it has been a little bit (laughs) challenging. It's been so good for me, I would be honest, because I think it's the communication. You know, when you say something, you repeat it and you repeat it and then they don't do it right. I mean, Mm. I have had to look at uh, control. (laughs) <laughs> and to be uh, that's a good word my control. frustration yeah well every day I say my affirmation I'm in control I'm Absolutely. in control because sometimes when I first came it was like somebody pressed a button you're like why oh. <laughs> yeah you know whereas now I can be a lot more controlled yeah so I've learned a lot since I've been here but um, yeah no and I in fact this team was probably one of the smallest teams I've worked with my last job was at Rosewood London yeah I worked there four years and I had like eight a brigade of 80 and now I had a brigade when I came of like nine or yeah, nine so or ten be easy peasy <laughs> yeah. yeah you'd think so <laughs> wouldn't you yeah exactly i thought it was going to be yeah. but anyway oh, yeah. no, so, how, cool. so how many salons has uh, roots got did so you we say just you've opened, opened our second, second one just opened our and second. what's the plan is it to take over yes, the middle east and, of course wouldn't yeah. that be the dream yeah uh definitely roots of men we'd love to have one day uh but um yeah always to uh, get bigger with new ideas no that's the reason why I cut my hair so short because I couldn't find a salon to look yeah, after my, what we my keep being beautiful told. long locks yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. But, uh, and some people no, but that's it. true it's so hard to find a place because you know with our European hair yes that's it's exactly tough. right so yeah. yeah I'm so happy that's exactly. oh there was many yeah. times when I walked out of the salon and it looked like I, my hair had just been cut round uh. in a bowl <laughs> And it was just like <laughs> we have men say, I don't want to have a short back and size. That's all I ever get. I just want someone to cut my hair so it yeah. looks like me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah one there day, are one stories. Day, there are stories. There we are. So um, we're moving to the World Cup. Oh, yes. Yeah. So uh, you're hoping that, uh, you know, you get the uh, footballers' wives in through the Indeed, door and uh, exactly. some we're famous We're supposed footballers. to have, what, like over 400 families coming over here. There's business for everybody. Yeah. I think there are over 700 beauty salons in Qatar. Yeah, no, it's in really? every yeah. corner yeah. there is a yeah. salon. 700? Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Wow. Oh, no. It's like dentist. It's a lot of dens- yeah. dentists. Yeah, but I can understand dentists because, you know, it's, um, you know, they're just... But you it's the have whole insurance so and, um, you know. There but are, we, we love our beauty. Yeah, Look totally at me, right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. you're very artistic today. I'm su- the thing is, I do it up when I have a bad hair day. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> everybody who sees me, yeah, you know, I have a bad hair Okay. But I want to, can I, can I ask you Please, something? please, because please. I'm, maybe you are about to ask, but I don't want you to. No, you go me. ahead, you go ahead. So because when we met the first time, we, we talked about what you're going to do in the summer and you talked, oh, yes. th- you told me that you're going to Sri Lanka yes. and you had a story about yes, Sri Lanka, yes. but maybe you were supposed to talk about that. Uh, no, I wasn't, but uh, I was going to so close the show. But, oh, so. <laughs> but that, you can't keep no, this No, absolutely. Yeah. You're, it's a you're cool in love thing. with the story. Oh, so. I love that. So uh, we, uh, I'm very touched to have um, my, on my mother's side, uh, our, we were all born in Sri Lanka. Uh, we're going back five generations and originally the Haley's that um, went into export and um, about 20 years ago my aunt went back to Sri Lanka to um, basically go and see some of the the kind of her nanny that used to used to, and the drivers that used, used to work with the family and uh, they found she found them quite dissolute so uh, she took a loan out for three thousand um, pounds bought three houses and um, she gave herself a year to pay it back through good car boot sales and selling jams and everything. And three months later, the money was paid back because of the, the kindness and warmth of the community that she was in. Wow. And from there, after the tsunami, they were taking over £100,000 a year. Uh, and she has over 100 projects in Sri Lanka. Wow. Now, very sadly, my mum passed away last year and my aunt passed away this year. So I had a bigger calling to want to go there because in actual fact, I was only nine months when we left and I've never been back, which oh, is wow. dreadful. Yeah. And I know you think, oh my God, why is it? And I always wanted to go with my dad, but he doesn't want to travel anymore. So I went there on my own for six days and it was a fantastic experience. I went to see my grandmother's grave. I went to see um, the Hill Club, which was an expat area where all my parents and grandparents kind of spent their evenings and entertaining. Mm. 
Um, I went to see the golf club where we actually, my grandfather's and my grandmother is all over the walls oh, really? for for winning uh, cups and different things. And we mm. actually have the Beedon Cup uh, in aid of my grandfather that they do, well, now that my aunt's uh, passed away, we're hoping to maybe do it in the next two years. But we want to support that. That um, It's a tournament that's put on especially. I went to go and see my grandfather's uh, tea estate at uh, St. Leonard's. And do you know what? The office is exactly the same yeah. as it was all those wow. years ago. And so it, they've amazing. even got his picture on the wall. Wow. I took loads of photos. You like royalty in Sri Lanka. I, oh, it was amazing. And then I went to see my father's tea estate, um, park estate it's called. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to walk around that one. But, um, yeah, I went to uh, see uh, many kind of haunts of the family. And uh, and then I had the opportunity of going to see the Perahara Festival and see all the elephants and everything. And that was absolutely mm. great. So it was a very quick six days, but I, I did what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. And now uh, my heart is even stronger to try and support those people and try and keep those initiatives. She's opened so many schools, so many wells, uh, old people, young people, uh, people with disabilities, you name it. She has done so much for... Um, but you can for say it runs in the family, though. I mean, what you guys are doing with Roots oh, and all the Don't really think of it that way. Yeah, really, it does. <laughs> it's interesting. Oh. I love it. And you've taken on these initiatives as well, have you? Have you yes, have you taken yeah, on the baton? Yes, 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 yeah. yes, definitely. I wish I could do more because yeah. obviously I can't. we can't do charity work here. I can't raise money mm. here. But, you know, one way or the other... Uh, trying especially when I go back to UK to do awareness because some people can just she it's regala aid is uh, has got its own website but people can actually just what I do is I um, sponsor a child so you just pay 20 pounds 50 pounds whatever you want every month mm. but they've got those funds going in but since my aunt obviously was ill and then passed away the funds are getting less and less and less mm. and of course it means that they have to look at their projects mm. and stop some of the funding mm, which we really do. yeah I know it breaks your heart when you yeah. go there and see oh my gosh mm. And, you know, you can see how many hearts are broken uh, through her passing away. And they just all want to try and help in some way. Mm. But but this podcast is going worldwide. So, you know, can oh, people, do- yes, can they people can. donate? Oh, how sure can they? they definitely. Yeah. If you go on to Regala Aid, uh, you will see there uh, you can, uh, through PayPal, you can pay. Uh, you can do it either monthly. Mm. Um, we can actually send out. So, obviously, there's, there's obviously a certain amount of money goes towards PayPal. But... Um, if you um, if you maybe message them through um, through the website, we can also send out, especially if you're in the UK, to set up direct debits because that's what you really want to yeah. do: is set up a direct debit so that the money, the whole amount, is yeah, going up. And the one biggest thing about I don't I'm not very good at um, supporting charities generally because I'm never too sure how much of my mm. my pound yeah. actually goes to the cause but I can promise you like 98 96% goes to the cause because my aunt used to go there twice a year for a whole month she funds herself the literally the only thing that's going towards is putting a newsletter to let people know where their money's going that's mm. literally it uh, everything else we have some amazing support in the UK they uh, do it all through voluntary work that's superb and yeah. it's Regala R-A-G-A-L-L-A Regala Aid Rap R-A-P Regala Aid Project superb cool right nice cool story yeah. amazing okay well we're coming to the end of the wow. show so it's the quick fire question oh round. gosh really yes <laughs> did she not tell you that either um, <laughs> sorry so what's that's your favourite okay. film Oh my gosh, I'm really bad because I don't really watch films, but I like James Bond, believe it or not, ah, all of James Bond. Cool. It's a bit yes. sad, really. I like action, any action. I love action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's your favourite book? Oh. <laughs> you can tell I don't read very many books. <laughs> okay. <laughs> any audio books? Yeah. Well, I've been doing a lot of the um, uh, Mind Valley auditor books recently yeah so um that's kind of what i spend my time on at the moment we mm-hmm. have that in common too yeah yeah and who inspires you uh who's your inspiration uh, i have to say my sister has been a big Aww. inspiration to be honest with you yeah uh but i've worked with so many uh, inspiring people and since i've been in qatar my journey here there's so many inspiring people mm-hmm. sandra hope Elizabeth Reese, you know, Pooja. Um, I've got a lovely lady we work with called Leah. 
Uh, she, um, everybody, there's so many women that are inspirational every day, and especially in Qatar. Mm. There's something very special about Qatar, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. true. Inspirational quote? Oh. Uh, well, one I've always worked with in, in, uh, in hospitality was, uh, good enough is the enemy of excellence. Wow. Mm. That's great. Can you say that one more time? I good enough it. is the enemy of excellence. <laughs> So good. And you tattoo. And you tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> but my other one, actually, we've done a lot of work around self-love. A lot of women, they, they look after their families. They do everything for everyone, but never for themselves. Never look after and when themselves. they do, they feel guilty about mm. it. Mm. But how can they look after everyone else if they don't look after themselves? Absolutely. So that even that little ritual, uh, we did a video on self-love. We asked three questions. And each woman, uh, four ladies had to um, do it individually. But my sister's was really interesting. Her little ritual is she has a bath every day. Uh, and she likes to put her bath salts in her bath. And she gets her Sudoku and she has a cup of tea. And that is bliss for her. Yeah. You know? nice. uh, and it's lovely hearing di different people's stories. So mm. whether it be having a facial, whatever it is, mm -hmm. every woman should be making sure that they do that little bit of self-love. Mm. Absolutely. True. I have a question. Yes, do. So, my dear friend, what makes your heart sing? What do you, what makes you happy and filled with, you know, Shall I gratitude? tell you what many, uh, I mean, I love what I do and I love being in Qatar, but if I can tell you where my heart totally sings is my daughter and the horses. We're equestrian and that is just melts my heart every day when I think about them. Hmm. Thank you. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Karen. Not at all. It's been thank a pleasure you having so you so much for having me. Honestly, it's thank been a you. very, very beautiful experience. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. Don't forget our other podcasts, Doha Heat and In the Game in Sports the game. Podcast. And spread the love and spread and the food. message of our podcast. And tune in to our food review, mm -hmm. which happens every week. Yes, every Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.